Hello friends. Welcome to Dr. Ajendran's Online Academy. The course title is, Physical Chemistry, and the specific topic, is Thermodynamics. Let's move to the classroom. In this class, we are going to learn about, the thermodynamic system, surroundings, boundary, and universe. Also, we are going to learn about, the types of thermodynamic systems. Finally, we will study, the types of processes in thermodynamics. The system, is the part of the world, in which we have a special interest. In other words, a system is defined, as a quantity of matter, or a region in space, chosen for study. It may be a reaction vessel, an engine, an electrochemical cell, a biological cell, and so on. The mass or region outside the system, is called the surroundings. The real or imaginary surface, that separates the system from its surroundings, is called the boundary. The universe, is the entire region, that includes the system and surroundings. To understand these terms, let's consider a coffee cup. If we are interested to study, the thermodynamic properties, of coffee in the cup, then we can define coffee as a system. Here, the coffee cup, is the boundary. In this case, it is a real boundary. The region other than the coffee and cup, is called, the surroundings. The type of system, depends on the characteristics of the boundary, that divides it from the surroundings. There are three types of system, namely, open, closed, and isolated system. An open system, can exchange both energy and matter with its surroundings. An open cup of coffee, is a simple example of an open system. A closed system, can exchange energy, but not matter with its surroundings. A cup of coffee, with a lid on it, is an example of a closed system. An isolated system, can exchange neither matter, nor energy with its surroundings. A thermo flask, can be considered, as an isolated system. Next, let's see the major types of process in thermodynamics. The processes, that we are going to learn here, are the cyclic, steady flow, quasi-static or quasi-equilibrium, isothermal, isobaric, isochoric, diathermic, adiabatic, exothermic, and endothermic processes. A system is said to have undergone a cycle, if it returns to its initial state at the end of the process. That is, for a cycle, the initial and final states are identical. The Carnot cycle, is an example of cyclic process, that we will study later in this course. In a steady flow process, fluid flows through a control volume steadily. A large number of engineering devices, operate for a long time, under the same conditions, and they are classified as steady flow devices. The processes involving such devices, can be called steady flow processes. The volume, mass, and the total energy content of the control volume, remain constant during a steady state flow process. When a process proceeds in such a manner, that the system remains infinitesimally close to an equilibrium state at all times, it is called a quasi-static, or quasi-equilibrium process. In the image shown on the screen, a gas piston cylinder, is compressed suddenly. The molecules near the piston, will not have enough time to escape, and they will have to pile up in a small region in front of the piston. Thus, creating a high pressure region there. Because of this pressure difference, the system can no longer be said to be in equilibrium. This makes the entire process, non-quasi-equilibrium. 
However, if the piston is moved slowly, the molecules will have sufficient time to redistribute, and there will not be a molecule pile up in front of the piston. Therefore, equilibrium is maintained at all times, and this is a quasi-equilibrium process. The prefix ISO is often used to designate a process for which a particular property remains constant. An isothermal process, for example, is a process during which the temperature remains constant. An isobaric process is a process is during which the pressure remains constant. An isochoric or isometric process is a process during which the specific volume remains constant. An adiabatic process is one, during which no energy enters, or leaves the system by heat. This is achieved by, thermally insulating the walls of the system. Having the process proceed so quickly, that no heat can be exchanged. The double walls of a vacuum flask, are adiabatic, to a good approximation. A process, in which heat is freely exchanged, between the system and surroundings, is called diathermic. An ordinary metal container, is a diathermic. An endothermic process, is a process in which, energy is consumed from its surroundings, as heat. An example of an endothermic process, is the vaporization of water. An exothermic process, is a process that releases energy, as heat, into its surroundings. All combustion reactions, are exothermic. Next, let's see what happens, when the exo and endothermic reactions occur, in an adiabatic, or diathermic containers. When an endothermic process occurs, in an adiabatic system, the temperature falls. If the process is exothermic, then the temperature rises. When an endothermic process occurs, in a diathermic container, energy enters as heat from the surroundings, and the system remains, at the same temperature. If the process is exothermic, then energy leaves as heat, and the process is isothermal. Alright, that's it for today's class. See you in the next class.